All righty, guys, let's go ahead and jump into things. Welcome to our final webinar of the week. Uh, it is the beginning of August, very beginning of August. Today is Thursday, August 2nd. Uh, might be a different day for some of you guys, depending on where you are at. But nevertheless, we are getting to the end of this week. And uh, just as I mentioned in Slack, it's been a slow week. We had a really killer month in July. Um, specifically the past two weeks previous to this one have been awesome and you know it's uh, Forex has its good weeks to trade and slow weeks to trade and this happens to be one of those slow weeks so we're gonna look at the markets look at some possible setups but uh, it's been pretty slow um, only announcement that I have is Vimeo is has still not gotten back to me uh, they basically long story short they changed their interface for uploading videos and whatnot and um, for some reason I have all the normal settings that I normally do for the videos in the back office but it's still not showing in the back office for you guys when you log in so I did post the link to yesterday's video on YouTube and I'll continue to post the links to each day's recording um, on like a YouTube link on Slack until I get it fixed. Probably will be fixed within in the next couple of days here, just waiting for them to email me back. Probably something that I'm just doing wrong that I, I'm not seeing, but um, anyways, uh, to end off the week guys, tomorrow we have NFP. So if you guys are not familiar with NFP, that stands for non-farm payrolls. Uh, you'll see it on some calendars as non-farm employment change, but uh, just know that the NFP, that's the acronym non-farm payrolls and um, it is basically in in short it measures how many people got added to payroll companies basically just how many jobs were created in the US that's the easy way to say it but um, it is also specifically added to payroll companies and it says excluding the farming industry so that's why it's called non-farm payrolls is because it's everybody that was added to payroll companies except from the farming industry that makes sense. So um, generally speaking, you can also write this down in your in your trading journal. Generally speaking, a number around 200K. So 200,000 new jobs added. That's like a good, a good general bar, ballpark number showing decent growth. You know, 191K is still a decent number. Okay. Last month, 213K. This month, forecasted 191K. So just to be clear, you know, even if it came out at 191K, that's still generally good for the dollar. You know, even though it's still technically less than last month and it's, you know, it's, it's technically declining growth, you know, we have to be aware of that, but it's still growth nonetheless. Um, if you start, if we start to get like around like a, maybe like 160K, 150K, that's, you know, pretty bad. Even 170K is, is getting down there. Maybe even 180K, that's getting into like the yellow zone. But um, I think we're still in the green with 191K. Um, average hourly earnings. This is pretty uh, straightforward. You can also read the description right here, but this is the change in price um, from a month to month basis that businesses pay for labor. Ex again, excluding the farming industry. So generally speaking, if this number goes up, it's generally good. You know, it shows job growth, it shows wage growth, and uh, it's just generally shows a strengthening economy all right so um, that's good and then we have unemployment rate which is very self-explanatory right you don't know I mean unemployment rate, the percentage of people out of the population that are unemployed so you yeah, I don't know the I don't remember the exact population of the US right now I think it's somewhere around uh, 330 million population of America three okay yeah 325 million as of last year so it probably is like right around 330 million right now um and so we are looking at four percent of 330 million so roughly what that's about roughly 12 million people or so um that are currently unemployed at four percent so the unemployment rate is uh is actually supposed to go down also so three point it's supposed to go to, down to 3.9%. So that's good, right? Unemployment rate goes down. That means that people are getting jobs, that less people are unemployed. So that's that's why I say it's self-explanatory. So NFP is also, if you also want to write this down, if you guys are new to learning about this type of stuff, NFP is the most consistent, uh, most consistently volatile piece of news for the US dollar. 
And right next to that would be FOMC, the, the federal funds rate, which we saw Wednesday. So just a little fun fact for you guys, F, uh, N NFP, which is coming out tomorrow, happens generally the first Friday of every month. Okay, if it doesn't happen the first Friday, it happens the second Friday. It only happens the second Friday once in a while. Usually it's the first Friday every month, like 99% of the time. So that happens 12 times a year, right? 12 months in a year. So that's 12 times a year. And that's the most consistent because it's 12 times. Federal funds rate, which we ha saw on Wednesday, happens eight times a year. And this, is, uh, this could be arguably more volatile if they raise or decrease interest rates. Um, but uh, that only happens eight times a year. Okay, so just some just some good things for you guys to probably know about. All right, um, so moving into tomorrow, we have NFP, uh, and then and then that's it, right? For the rest of the week, I mean, we have a couple other things: PMI for the pound, we have some PMI for the U.S. dollar, some other things, but really, most main thing is NFP. Um, we're going to be looking at the pound. Uh, we aren't really. Gonna, I'm not really interested in trading it, but we did actually see a majority rules or a majority a majority favored nine to zero. So nine of the committee members, uh, we actually had two of them which uh, wanted to dissent from the the vote originally. So uh, it was seven that were for it, zero that were for dropping it, and two were that were for keeping it the same. I believe that last one is for keeping it the same. Yeah. Third is how many votes to hold rates. So we actually saw those two people hop on board and all nine of them ended up voting for raising interest rates. And this was, this was a very, we're going to look at in just a moment, this was a very classic buy the rumor, sell the news type of scenario. If you guys don't know what buy the rumor, sell the news means, it is a saying in the financial markets. It's used in the stock market. It's used in the Forex markets, but write that down. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Okay, we're going to go over what that means in just a moment. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Buy the rumor, sell the news. Okay. And that, and we saw that happen on the pound. We're going to look at in just a moment. They did raise interest rates, which were which we know is usually good, right? That should be good, right? In that, um, I don't want to get into too much education overload, you guys, right now. But in short. If they raise interest rates, that's usually good. If they decrease interest rates, that's usually bad. If you're decreasing interest rates, you're making it more available for people to want money because interest rates are lower. So that means everybody wants more money. Banks want more money. People want to buy houses because interest rates are lower. So the Federal Reserve needs to print more money to be able to supply all these loans that people want because interest rates are low. That's the whole idea, right? You, interest rates only apply to loans. So with all these loans, the Federal Reserve has to print more money. And everybody knows just common sense supply and demand, right? If there's more money out there, it's, it's devalued, right? So more money is being printed. That's causing inflation, okay? And if interest rates go up like they just did for the pound, right? Like we just saw that go up for the pound, if, if interest rates go up, you don't want to borrow more money because, you know, banks don't want to borrow money. People don't want to buy houses because the interest rates are up. They don't want to pay extra money in interest. So that causes deflation, deflationary periods, okay? Because they don't have to print money. You don't need to print money. That deflates things, right? It creates the value of the currency increases because there is less of it. All right, let's go ahead and so let's remember this. Let's remember this whole thing that that should have been good for the pound. Should have been good for the pound, right? But anyways, let's get into the actual technicals. So looking at the dollar index, um, I told you guys yesterday that I am still waiting for confirmation. I really would like to see it either break the 95 area or break the support. But while it was in this area, I'm not really interested in trading it. But overall, my bias is to the upside. I said that yesterday and we did get that. We saw some major upside actually from the dollar yesterday. And, but I'm still on the sidelines, right? Nevertheless, I'm still on the sidelines. We still have not broken. We aren't, we aren't, you know, home free yet, guys. Just because the dollar was really bullish yesterday and it followed our bias and everything was great. I mean, is it really great though? Because we didn't take any trades, you know? So, I mean, I'm not trying to say like that we missed any opportunities, but what I mean is like, don't 
let the emotions of not taking a trade and everything lining up how we want to just uh, to persuade you to taking a trade right now without still waiting for the confirmation that we're looking for. So we're waiting for that confirmation to break. And that confirmation is going to come with a break. We're looking for a break of this. We're looking for a break. And then we're looking for some sort of continuation pattern. Most of the time, what we're going to see is we're going to see a break and then we're going to see a retest on this daily structure. And we're going to see some sort of confirmation around here. That price is bouncing off of this former resistance level in moving higher. And that's the trade that we're looking for, where we're generally going to buy around this area, set our stop loss back inside of this range and looking for a very high reward, right? Very low risk with very high reward. So this is the trade that we're looking for on the dollar index. But we can't trade it inside of this zone. There's a very high possibility because we've seen a bounce here, 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 and here that once again, we may see resistance in this area and price come right back down. This consolidation has been very strong. And when we talk about confirmation, we need that confirmation also. There is a possibility that on a breakout, it could be a false breakout. We could get a breakout, price could come back in, come all the way back down here, fake out again to the downside, and then move up higher. Okay, so just to be clear, if we break through this resistance on the dollar index, let me draw that a little bit better. If we break through this resistance, we need to still wait for confirmation on a retest or maybe we don't get that retest. Maybe price breaks and we just consolidate and we make like a really nice bull flag at that point. Then we, then we still get that confirmation, right? We're looking to buy on a break of that bull flag. So just to be clear, paint a picture for you guys of what we're looking for. Yeah, 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 yeah. Kevin, you said monster head and shoulders. Um, absolutely. So there's a couple different structures that could be right here. So there's a couple different like setups. So there is a giant head and shoulders on the dollar index or, or inverted head and shoulders being created or potentially forming. So go to your head and shoulders tool. You guys don't, if you guys don't have this down here, if you guys don't have trading view, um, I would recommend using it, by the way. I'm just going to, I'll mention this too, because I know that I see that there's a lot of new people in the group on here. This is tradingview.com. It's free. Um, I pay for a pro version. I think I pay like 200 bucks a year or something like that. You don't have to have the pro version. If you don't, you're going to get ads once in a while on the bottom left here that you have to click out of. So it's kind of annoying, but highly worth it. It's, it's worth the investment. It's like, I mean, if you're going to look at it, like if, as if you go to college, right, you buy textbooks for your course, this is like, you know, the same thing um, is, is this could be like the same thing you need you, you need this to to be able to chart well you the, having the best tools and, and making it the easiest to chart is one of your best friends having having good resources um there's all sorts of little tools in here you can star little things and you can like remove them and you'll see in the bottom over here they pop up when i star something so this is just the stuff that i have this is what i like and so i know a lot of you guys probably want to copy it exactly how i have so this is what I have. Um, and I, I have the head and shoulders. So it's found right over here, head and shoulders tool. And we have an inverted head and shoulders. Here's that left shoulder. Here's the head, the bottom on the dollar index that we formed earlier this year. And now we have this right shoulder forming. And this right shoulder is getting a, a little complex, right? This, this right shoulder is definitely complex. Um, and it could be even more complex depending on how we see right like what i see is is this kind of this this is the is the bottom of the right shoulder and all of this that kind of like ends the right shoulder if that makes sense like right here oh right here and then pretty much all this consolidation has been around the neckline that's that's how i see it so if we break this 95 area, you know, expect a really big big push up on the dollar index. You look to the left over here and there's really nothing around this zone holding price, right? So there's this, there's this big, big inverted head and shoulders. There's a possibility, and why I say that this could get more complex is 
this whole move that we're seeing right here, this could just be like the armpit, right, of – wait, would that be the armpit? Yeah, I think that would be the armpit, right? Like the right arm armpit, if that makes sense, right? And we could see the right shoulder still maybe come all the way back down here before moving up. So this is still a possibility as well. It'd be something like this, I guess, right? Essentially, what I'm saying is this whole move that we've seen up right here of consolidation could still be like the, the, the finishing of the head, basically, the finishing of the right part of the head going into the right shoulder. Possibility, right? This is all speculation, lots of different possibilities. The most likely scenario, in my opinion, is that, oh, I did not mean to do that. I, why did I do that? Lock that. I really don't want to be moving that. Um, most likely scenario is the first scenario that we talked about, though. That this is most likely in ascending head and shoulders with the right shoulder being much smaller, as we can see, than the right shoulder. I mean, the right shoulder being much smaller than the left shoulder and us breaking this and going up higher. If you guys don't know about, about head and shoulders, go research it. Um, it's pretty simple. The, 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 the idea of a head and shoulders is pretty simple. Second scenario is what you're seeing, head and shoulder second long term yeah definitely definitely impossible um i think we're going to get a clearer this this structure right here is going to give us a clearer um direction a clear bias you know if we break through this area then i think that's going to give us that confirmation that the smaller head and shoulders was the move and if we continue to find resistance in this area and we break out of this zone then we're probably going to find that that larger right shoulder coming back down to the left shoulder over here um, is the scenario. So we'll pretty much confirmation. It's just confirmation right now. Um, so let's move on to gold though. I don't want to spend too much time uh, going over the same thing. Uh, gold, I said yesterday, I said gold is going to 1200. Um, I spent a lot of time going over my whole idea and strategy of what works for me of the $50 theory and the quarter, the $50 quarter theory on gold and um, I said I would expect it to move towards 1200. We actually saw a really volatile move over the past 24 hours towards gold. Move, moved from around the 1220 region and, and dropped um, into sub 1210, which is really crazy. Like we're, we're sub 1210 right now. We're like we're actually retesting 1210 right now. Um, and I think we're gonna, I think we are gonna get to that target, 1200. So we're watching that. As far as entering a trade on gold, definitely do not enter a trade on gold if you aren't already in a trade. Um, am I bullish on the dollar? Yes, I am bullish on the dollar, Kevin. Um, Euro USD is picking up movement. It is picking up some momentum. We are we are starting to see some movement, but again, just like the dollar index, you know, it's getting to a very close zone. We are not home free on Euro USD yet. Um, we need to let, we need to wait for further confirmation. If we can get like a very nice retest, if we get like a perfect retest, or I mean perfect, like we get like a four hour actually come and touch this trend line and then reject off of this zone. I may look at taking a sell on Euro USD early around this area. I mean, very small probability right now. We would have to get some perfect, perfect price action. Um, otherwise, did that move? Let's see. Sorry, guys. I thought this green zone. I thought this green zone moved. I need to. I think I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. This green zone. Let me just check something out. I think it did move a little bit. Did it move on me? I don't know if you guys have that happen, but it definitely happens sometimes. Trading view will like move. I don't know. I'd have to go watch yesterday's recording to see if it was that low. But trading view definitely sometimes moves some stuff around. Sometimes it's got little bugs here and there. I still, even with that, even with it doing that, like that's a rare, a very rare occasion. It does that. Usually I have no issues. Still, still way better than MetaTrader 4 in my opinion. I still, let me be clear too. I still have to, if you guys aren't like, you know, follow or like, if you don't understand everything, um, that's okay. I don't actually trade on this platform. I, I'm not trading, like buying and selling on trading view. I still have, I don't know if you got, I don't think you guys can see my applications, but I have MetaTrader 4 down here in the bottom right open and I still go and place the trades on there. You know, I'll have like the major, major big trend lines and things like that on MetaTrader 4. 
but I'm always, I'm always checking trading view more. And then I still have to go over and execute the trades on, on to MetaTrader for, okay? Um, I would love if they, they do support actually buying and selling on trading view, some brokers, but FX choice is not one of those, unfortunately. So when they do, I will be all over that though. I'll be the first to let you guys know. Um, but pretty much the setup that I'm looking for on Euro USD, if you guys can see, you guys can see this support over here. All right. So we're looking for this, this to break. We're looking for this support to break on a break of the support, just like the opposite of the dollar index, we're gonna look for a some sort of retest or bearish confirmation and this is the move that we're looking for. Not this little move here, okay? Yes, there could be little scalps inside there in this down move and in, the, in these, these intraday moves, but overall I'm looking for that, that bigger move to the downside. If you guys can't tell, a lot of my trades over the past recent months, we've gone from um, you know, a lot of one to two, tr one to two risk to reward trades, you know, with occasional one to one risk to reward trades with pretty much nothing, but actually, yeah, for the past couple of months, nothing but minimum one to two risk to reward trades with, you know, we've had some like one to 17 risk to rewards, one to 10 risk to reward trades, um, one to four risk to rewards, one to five, you know, we've really upped that risk to reward on our trading. So uh, with USD Swiss Franc, I'm expecting more upside on this pair too, just as I would expect downside on Euro USD since these have a negative correlation to each other. Um, I think we really got a clear fake out in this area. Um, I think this is definitely a trap. Oh, it almost trapped us too. I mean, I, I said that I was still waiting for confirmation, but I did post, I don't know if you guys saw it, I did post something about the possibility looking for sells on USD Swiss franc if we continue the downside momentum and uh, looking for the 50% retracement level. We clearly did not get that though. So just another great example of why we look for confirmation, why I work with the higher time frames, and why I'm just such a patient trader. I don't get caught in moves like that. You know, occasionally we will, not to say I'm a perfect trader. Nobody's perfect but we do our best to eliminate risk on trades. Um, pound dollar in pound yen, I'm not interested in taking a position on them, but I do just wanna to touch on this topic. Um, I'm, I've really dragged out today's webinar, guys. I've done a lot of education, so um, I'll, I'll really just try to, try to speed things up, but I do wanna to just touch on this whole buy the rumor, sell the news. So you guys should know that by looking at any Either, either of these two charts, pound dollar or pound yen, if this chart goes down, that's bad for the dollar and good for the other currency, favorable for the dollar in this case and favorable for the yen in this case, okay? Um, which is weird, and this is a great example why I don't trade the news. This is a great example why you shouldn't trade the news either and why just don't trade the news. It's simple as that. Um, now, that's also subjective, not to say, you know, this is a whole nother side of trading and I'm not going to get into all of this, but a whole other side of trading is like, let's say you have a profit goal. You know, you want to make, I don't know, you want to make 5% in a month or let's say, let's say after a year, right? Let's say, uh, let's go on a, on a higher time frame. Let's say your, ye your yearly goal is six. And this is what I'm going to, I'm going to talk about flipping accounts for a second. So you guys might want to listen to this because you guys know that I'm, I'm I don't advocate, um, you know, making, building your wealth off of flipping accounts, but um, and here's the but with flipping accounts is let's say your, your yearly goal is 60% and you hit that 60% and you do more than that 60%. You know, you have uh, an 80% year, right? So you gained 80%, you wanted to gain 60%. You, you, so you are up an extra 20% than you projected to be. It is not a bad move or it's not bad risk to reward because you, you you're you're already way past your goal at this point you're playing with profits um you could allocate five percent of that extra right out of that 20 percent that you made right you could take a quarter of that and you could put that into a higher leveraged account so you guys know that all of the accounts i trade all of your guys' accounts if you're connected to the trade copy are one to 25 leverage because we don't really need high leverage to risk 2% per trade, right? I think um, max we would need is maybe about one to 10 leverage at the most to be able to 
um, or at the bare minimum, I'm sorry, to be able to risk 2% per trade. But you could go and take that 25% that you made, you know, and that's all going to be a different number from, for everybody. That could be a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks, whatever. And you could play around in news trade or go high risk in attempt to flip with that. Now, I don't recommend doing that like as a new trader and you aren't going to get there as a new trader because you still need to hit your profit goal in this hypothetical situation. You're waiting a year at least to hit your profit goal and be in more profits. But you, you really need to solidify your mentality and in your emotions as a trader before you even delve into that, into adding on that area. The first, you know, because at that point you aren't really incorporating good risk management, but in a sense, psychologically you kind of are because you never you never would have even gotten to that point had you not hit your conservative profit goal if that makes sense right you're playing with like a, a quarter percent of the the over profits that you already made so it's really only a very small small percentage of your profits your overall profits that you made in that year that you're playing with if, if that makes sense guys and i mean that's the same thing as like taking the taking profits that you made and going and investing it into crypto right crypto is a very volatile and um, hard to use good risk management um, other than what you initially put into it right you can't like have a stop loss really on crypto i mean you can but if you're margin trading you're day trading but i didn't really want to get into all of that guys that's just uh that was just something that i thought of with news i know i'm going in a lot of different angles so i'm sorry if i'm confusing you guys Rewatch this if this is a lot of info but to get into just the pound of news very quickly Buy the rumor, sell the news generally means um, it's a general manipulation tactic that we see from market makers in the financial markets that you usually see that a lot of people don't like retail traders. When you're new to trading, you might go and look at the news. You might say, okay, hey, Thursday, I see Thursday. Look at right here, the pound, you know, and we didn't know that. I mean, we, we knew this before Thursday, right? We knew that the interest rates were going to rise. So, okay, and we know that that should be good based on the whole theory of deflation and inflation, but it doesn't happen like that right away. And then the, and the market makers want you to think that. They want you to think that it's as easy as that and they want. So one big thing is just a big red flag is if things are too obvious in the market, that should, that should have a big red flag and you should always be using good risk management um, or just staying away from it. But um, anyways, as a retail trader, as somebody, and, and if you're new to trading, you might see this and say, hey, interest rates are good. I know that should be good for the pound. So I'm going to go and I'm going to put, you know, 10 lots on pound dollar and five lots on pound yen and just pray to God that it goes in my direction. And, and that's going to turn my thousand dollar account to $15,000 and I'm going to be good. You know, I can quit my job and go from there. Right? No, no, it doesn't work like that, guys, because things like this happen. It's buy the rumor, sell the news type of thing. So um, we, we really saw it on pound yen too. We saw the days leading up. So this is actually the beginning of the week. And this is that manipulation, right? The beginning of the week, right? Everybody goes and looks at this, at the economic calendar. Everybody Sunday of this week, they're like, oh man, Thursday, easy money. Thursday, I'm going to go and I'm going to buy pound yen. So the market makers, they pushed price up this week. They made it look really, really bullish. Thursday, boom, you buy pound yen because everything looks good and you lose all your money and you're broke, all right? Because it's buy the rumor, sell the news. So what we saw, so smart money is buying the rumor. This is, the, this is smart money. They're already in the trade at the beginning of the week. They're buying the rumor, okay? They're buying all the hype on it. And then come the actual news, they sell it. They short, we're talking hedge funds, banks. They're going against retail traders. Um, and they're manipulating the markets. Uh, if you're scalping the news, can be profitable, stop order. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I think it's all subjective. Depends on what kind of news. There's the possibility of your stop loss getting gapped as well. So I don't recommend news trading on like your main account, things like that, you know, or, or, trading with, you know, any money that you have any emotional attachment to that type of thing. But, um, that is for another topic, but yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's, that's both the pound pairs. So just, just be aware with, with news trading guys that, 
Um, it's not as always as simple as it looks. It's much more complex and, and very manipulated, okay? Um, pound yen hasn't really moved over the past 24 hours. We saw a little bit of a dip and then it recovered. Um, it's right actually right where it was on yesterday's webinar. More than likely on a bullish dollar, on a weaker euro dollar, we're going to see dollar yen continue higher. Um, AUD, USD, and the Kiwi, both are finding downside. Makes a lot of sense though. Um, we're finding, we're seeing downside on Euro USD. Finally, they're both moving down towards the lows of their, their uh, the, the lows of their recent consolidation at the lows. And you can see, you guys notice, for those of you guys that might be new to these webinars and new to, new to just like trading and co the correlations, uh, look at Euro, look at me switch between Euro USD, AUD USD, and the Kiwi watch. You see all that? They aren't perfect, right? Obviously, they have some days that are different. There's some weeks that are even completely different, but the general trend, right? Big, right? Let's draw it on NZD USD very quickly. All right, we have a big up move, a little bit of consolidation, down move, a little bit of a pullback, down move, and then recent consolidation. And if we overlay this on this chart, AUD USD, very similar, and Euro USD. Wow, very, very similar. So maybe that's a light bulb in some of your guys' heads, right? Mm, maybe you should take correlations a little seriously or, you know, it's like, or just make, or maybe you're over complicating things. Just keep things simple, guys. Like simple, simple, simple. Correlations, confirmations, and that's it. Correlations, confirmations, I like that. And price action, right? But confirmations is price action, so. USD CAD, um, I said yesterday, we're probably getting a reversal around this zone. Uh, I mean, obviously it's not a strong reversal yet. It's nothing, it's, it's nothing to be wowed about, but uh, I did, I mean, we aren't seeing it go down further and it's going up. So that's going in the direction we want, right? Um, something I noticed just now also, no, nah, it doesn't look too great. I thought I saw a trend line in here, but I don't think I do. Yeah, 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 okay, that trend line was already there. I was wondering. I, I forgot for a second, guys. I had everything hidden. So there we go. Okay, so there, there's all of our markups on USD CAD. Looks kind of nice when there's nothing on there, right? I mean, it looks simple, right? You can see that, like, it's kind of in this little weird range. And boom. Oops. Boom. There we go. So we might be going for another, another impulse, another impulse higher. Very possible, very possible that we're going back up to all-time highs of this year, yearly highs, not all-time highs, yearly highs. Sorry. Okay. Um, and then let's just finish this up, guys. Let me go ahead and finish up with the uh, Euro AUD. All right. Um, nothing else. Also, by the way, on here, I'm really interested in Euro AUD, guys. Geez, this is has been, you know, I, I want to say use the term emotional roller coaster, but we aren't in this trade. We have no emotional attachment to it. So it's it's not an emotional roller coaster. It's just been a test of our patience, test of our wits, definitely just waiting, waiting and waiting and waiting on this trade. And, you know, it seems like every single day there's just more and more added confirmation to the downside, right? We had this strong bearish engulfing candle, you know, we, well, our original bias started back here, guys. Remember, we were looking for shorts back in here, and we caught this sell on this drop, and then it came all the way back up here, and then we got we got this little confirmation. We waited again. We got this confirmation, and then we shorted twice in here. You guys remember that? And then we've been on the sidelines ever since um, because it's still in the range. I'm still on the sidelines, but – Guys, this is really like starting to shape up. We got, if you don't know what this formation is right here, this is called a tweezers tops. It's a bearish candlestick formation. So I highly recommend, I'm just going to drop this because I know a lot of you guys are new on here. If you guys do not have this page. I'm going to put this, I'm going to throw this in the chat room right this second in the chat room on, okay, it's right there. It's in the chat on Slack. That's, you need to study this, print this out. Eat, sleep, and breathe price action. This is price action, candlestick patterns, and you'll see this pattern right here. Tweezers tops. 
Okay, it's a bearish candle. Generally, after we see that formation, you start to see um, selling pressure. We won't get into what each individual candle. I don't want to overload you guys, super overload you guys. I've given you guys so much information today already, but just know that when you see this formation, it usually means price will go down after that. Not all the time, but a good a good amount of the time. And there's just so much confluence for this this pair to go down right now. I've been ultra patient on this. The weekly looks so nice, so much exhaustion in this area. We've even got a little bit of a head and shoulders going on on this pair. Um, you know, we've got this little little guy right here, head and shoulders going on, like possible right shoulder in in the in the process. So. Um, but this is, this is what I mean. Like, like being patient as a trader guys, like waiting for, for confirmation, like as good as this looks and as much as it pains me not to just pop into this trade again, um, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Cause there's been just so much manipulation on this trade. Like I genuinely am not going to be surprised if we saw something like that happen. And then finally price go down. Like I would not be surprised because it's, it's one of those things where the setup looks too good right now. Market makers know they see what we're seeing. Everybody sees the same thing. So they see this, they know we see this and they know we're trying to make easy money and they don't want us to make easy money. So we have to just be, play it smart. So that's,